Hi, I'm Serena, a 30-year-old art teacher with a small art business on the side. My life took an extraordinary turn six years ago when I met the love of my life, Archer, at an art gallery. I had been visiting the art gallery that day with a couple of friends, but I had gotten separated from them at some point. I didn't really pay much attention to it because I was too entranced by all the art around me. Eventually, I found this beautiful piece that just called out to me. I just kept staring at all the bright and lovely colors in the painting. My mind raced with various interpretations of it. However, it turned out that painting had not only entranced me, but also another gentleman. That gentleman was Archer. It was fate. Archer and I struck up a conversation about the painting. We must have stood in front of that painting for 15 minutes, just bouncing off our interpretations back and forth. Eventually, we decided to grab a coffee, and that marked the beginning of our beautiful relationship. Over the next four years, Archer and I built a blissful life together. Our love for art continued to bind us. We went on amazing dates and officially became a couple pretty quickly. When we decided it was time for us to introduce each other to our parents, we started with mine. My parents warmly accepted Archer as part of our family. I hoped that I would be treated the same way by Archer's parents. However, unfortunately, I didn't. To be more specific, Archer's mother, Irene, did not like me. She made it very obvious. At first, Everything seemed to go smoothly during the introduction. They appeared to like me, and I genuinely enjoyed their company. However, things took an unexpected turn when Irene inquired about my profession. When I mentioned that I was an art teacher and had an online art business, her face dropped, and I could sense her disapproval. Without hesitation, she turned to Archer and asked him if he was seriously dating someone who didn't have a real job. Her words stung, and I felt hurt that she not only disregarded my profession, but also questioned our relationship. Before I could respond, Archer's father, Oscar, intervened, instructing Irene to shut up. Irene, please stop this judgmental behavior. It's not fair to Serena. Well... I can't help what I think. I just don't understand why Archer is with someone like her. It's not your place to judge. Serena is a wonderful person, and she makes Archer happy. That's what matters. I just don't think her job is good enough for our family. That's not for you to decide. Serena is passionate about her art, and she's successful in her own right. We should support her dreams. I just worry about Archer's future with her. Archer is capable of making his own choices, and he loves Serena. We should respect that. Well, forgive me for looking out for our son. You're not looking out for him. You're being disrespectful to both of them. If you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say anything at all. Irene fell silent, and though dinner resumed, there was an uncomfortable tension in the air. I could feel the daggers of judgment Irene was shooting at me, and I felt really uncomfortable. Thankfully, Oscar sensed the need to break the ice and asked me to talk more about myself and my art business. I was relieved to have something positive to discuss, so I enthusiastically shared my passion for art and how each piece I sold felt like a step closer to becoming a better artist. Oscar listened intently, and I couldn't help but admire his open-mindedness and genuine interest in the work I did. As the evening drew to a close, Oscar bid us goodbye. As he hugged Archer goodbye, he told Archer that he was very proud of him for choosing a partner like me. It warmed both Archer's and my heart's. Despite the evening having been a little awkward, I finally felt accepted and loved by Archer's family. Well, at least one of them. After Archer dropped me off at my home, 
I told him how much I liked his dad. Oscar, you know, babe, I liked your dad. He just seemed so kind and open-minded. Yeah, he's always been the cool parent. He cares a lot about my happiness and safety. I'm glad he thinks I'm good enough for you. But I have to admit that I'm a little worried about your mom. She didn't seem to like me. I want her to accept me, too. I know, but give us some time. She's not quick to trust new people. But I'm sure she'll come around eventually. I hope so. I want her to see how much I care about you and how happy we are together. Just be yourself, darling. I know she'll see what I see in you. We'll take it one step at a time. You're right. I'll do my best to win her over and show her how much I love you and your family. That's all I can ask for, and I'll support you every step of the way. The next months were wonderful. As Archer and I moved in together, it felt like a dream, and our love grew even stronger. Not long after, Archer proposed, and I happily said yes. We were going to get married, and I was so excited to be with him forever. I also kept trying to connect with Irene, even though she was unsure about me at first. I hoped that, with patience and understanding, she would come to like me. I really wanted her to see how much Archer and I loved each other and to see me as part of their family. I wanted to show her that I truly loved her son for everything he was. I even tried to get her more involved in the art scene, not because I did art, but because Archer loved it. She was still cold and dismissive to me, no matter how hard I tried. As we planned the wedding, Irene's behavior became harder to handle. She kept giving unnecessary opinions and making fun of my choices. Archer tried to stand up to her, but she didn't listen, which made me frustrated. Thankfully, Oscar always stepped in and made her behave. Our wedding day finally came, and we were determined to have a beautiful ceremony, but Irene caused trouble during the ceremony and even tried to object. Luckily, Oscar stopped her quickly, making sure nothing spoiled our special moment. At the reception, Irene's disruptive behavior continued, but Oscar saved the day again. He firmly took her out of the hall to prevent more trouble. Later that night, he called us. I'm sorry I had to leave the reception early, but I couldn't let Irene cause more problems for you both. Oh, please don't apologize, Oscar. We're grateful for your support and understanding. Yeah, Dad, I feel bad you didn't get to enjoy the reception because of her. Don't worry about it, son. Your happiness is all that matters to me. You always know how to get my tears flowing. You're so selfless. Well, I don't mind making sacrifices for you two. Just make sure you keep my son happy, Serena. I promise I'll make your sacrifices worth it. You can count on that. I'll hold you to that promise. I felt blessed to have such a loving father-in-law. Despite Irene's difficult behavior, I found comfort in Oscar's presence and support. He cared about our happiness and stood up for us when needed. As time went on, Irene's antics only got worse. She found ways to sabotage every event we invited her to, causing tension and chaos. It reached a point where Oscar and Irene stopped attending our lunches, dinners, and many vacations altogether. Oscar didn't want Irene's behavior to cause more damage, so he chose to remove them both from these gatherings. But eventually, everything became too overwhelming for Oscar. It had been two years since he had properly spent time with his son. Every day, we had to deal with Irene's tantrums, and it took an immense toll on him emotionally and mentally. One night, Oscar came over to Archer's and my home, and we were shocked to see him breaking down in tears. Seeing Oscar, a stereotypically masculine man, so vulnerable, brought tears to both Archer's and my eyes. 
He poured his heart out to us, and we seated him in our living room. It's just so hard to deal with Irene. I never imagined she could be this way, and it's even worse that she's robbing me of time with the people I love. You don't have to go through this alone, Dad. Serena and I are here for you always. And that's right. We miss spending time with you, but we understand the situation. You do? I thought you might be upset with me for not being around. Of course not, Oscar. We know it's not your fault. You've been dealing with so much, and we appreciate all you've done for us. Yeah, Dad. We were talking about something important before you arrived. We've been considering the possibility of divorce. What? Divorce? Oh, don't worry. It's not our marriage. It's about Irene and you. We were worried about how to approach the topic with you. Yeah, we didn't want you to feel offended or hurt, but we thought it might be the best option considering everything. Oh, thank goodness. I thought you meant you two were having issues. I was ready to fight Irene if that was the case, because I knew that nothing but her could make you guys want to divorce. No, not at all. We're just concerned about your happiness and how Irene's behavior was affecting you. It's not fair that you have to struggle because of us. We want you to enjoy life and spend time with all the people you want to. Nobody should be holding you back. Yeah, you're practically mom's parent at this point, and I don't think you wanted to ever have to do that again after I moved out. Oh, shut up, son. You were a joy to raise, but you are right about me not wanting to parent your mother. Thank you both for thinking of me. Of course, it's the least we could do after everything you've done for us. So, Dad... Would you like to stay the night with us? You don't have to be in that stressful environment. I would appreciate that. I had another big fight with Irene, and I could use a peaceful night. Of course, you're welcome to stay as long as you like. Yeah, let's go get you settled in. Tomorrow we can talk more about what you want to do. Thank you for being there for me. I don't know what I'd do without you two. We feel the same way about you. We're family, and we'll face whatever comes together. That night, as I lay in bed next to Archer, my heart felt heavy with mixed emotions. I was relieved that Oscar was opening up to us and that we could support him, but I couldn't help but feel sorry for the turmoil he was going through because of Irene. I wish there was a way to help him find happiness and peace. The following day, we sat down with Oscar and discussed the divorce process in more detail. We assured him that we were there for him every step of the way. Archer and I offered our love and support, reminding him that our family would always be a source of strength for him. The next couple of days were filled with filing for Oscar's divorce a difficult and emotional process. To maintain peace at home and avoid any disruptions, Oscar went back to Irene pretending that everything was fine. Meanwhile, Archer had picked up the finalized divorce papers on his father's behalf and kept them in his cupboard. We were all thrilled for Oscar and looking forward to spending more time with him once the divorce was official. Archer called his dad to inform him about the papers, and Oscar planned to come to our place the next night to collect them. However, things took an unexpected turn when Irene went through Oscar's call log and saw that he had been talking to Archer without telling anyone. She showed up at our home, surprising both Archer and me. When we asked why she was there, Irene revealed that she wanted to know what we had been discussing with Oscar for so many days. What I discuss with Dad is personal, and it's not something I need to share with you. How can you say that? We're family, and family should be open with each other. I have the right to know what's going on. I know that we're family, but that doesn't mean we have to share every detail of our lives. 
everyone deserves their privacy and individuality. This is ridiculous. I've always been involved in your life, and now you're shutting me out. Irene, Archer has a right to his boundaries. It's not about shutting you out. It's about respecting each other's personal space. You're the reason our family is falling apart. Ever since you came into our lives, everything has changed. I understand that you might be feeling upset, but it's not fair to blame me for the issues in your family. If there's anyone to blame, it's yourself. How dare you talk back to me like that? Archer, tell your wife to talk to me with respect. Serena is right, Mom. She has always treated you with respect, but you can't expect her to take the blame for everything. Now I want you to leave our home. No, I won't leave. You can't get me out like this. I love you, but I won't tolerate this behavior. If you can't respect our boundaries, then you need to go. Fine, I'll leave, but before that, I need to use the bathroom. Well, our guest bedroom is undergoing renovations right now, so just hold it in until you get back home. Then just let me use yours. I need to go, please. Okay, fine, but be quick. As we waited for her to come back downstairs, Archer and I stayed in the kitchen. There was tension in the air, and I couldn't help but feel anxious. I wished Irene would leave soon so we could regain some peace. When Irene came back from the bathroom, she seemed determined. She had some papers in her hand and accused Archer of taking his mom's side. We were confused and asked her to explain. Irene waved the papers, claiming she found them in Archer's cupboard. Then she threw them at me. I was surprised and tried to catch them, but when I read what was written, I got even more confused. I don't get it. Why do you look so happy? Oh my God, can you not read? Those are divorce papers. Archer was tired of you. Now my family can finally go back to how it used to be. Why are you laughing? Are you crazy? No, no, you've got it all wrong. Archer is not divorcing me. What do you mean? I saw these papers in Archer's cupboard. I don't know if you can read, Irene. Those papers aren't signed by Archer. They're signed by your husband, Oscar. They're the divorce papers that Oscar was planning to give you. What? But why? It was a funny moment to see Irene thought that I'd be a sobbing, inconsolable mess once I saw the divorce papers. And to see her become just that was so funny. Her plan to cause trouble backfired, and I felt triumphant. I realized how twisted Irene's thinking was. Instead of seeing how her actions pushed Oscar away, she assumed the worst about Archer and me. Setting boundaries with her was important. Seeing Irene's shocked expression made me happy. It showed we needed to stand our ground and not let her control us. Archer and I knew this was a turning point in dealing with her. I wondered how this revelation would change her behavior. Would she see the consequences of her actions and change? Or would she keep causing problems? Only time would tell. As Oscar walked into the house, he saw Irene with the divorce papers in her hands, and he knew it was time to make a life-changing decision. Irene saw him and immediately started yelling, demanding to know why he was divorcing her. Why are you divorcing me, Oscar? I can't believe you would do this. Irene, how did you get hold of the papers? Mom snooped around our room with the excuse of needing to use the bathroom. I needed to find out what you were both hiding from me. This is exactly why I can't continue with our marriage. You never respect my or anyone else's privacy or boundaries. I'm sorry. I promise I'll change. Please give me another chance. I've given you chances before, but you never change. I can't be with someone who is so disrespectful and inconsiderate. Dad's right. Your behavior is hurting all of us. Please, 
I'll do whatever it takes. Don't give up on me. It's too late. This decision is final. Mom, it's time to leave now. Reluctantly, Irene left the home, sobbing as she went. It was a painful scene to witness, but it was a necessary step for Oscar to reclaim his happiness and for Archer and me to have a healthier and more peaceful life together. In the aftermath of Irene's departure, our family dynamic shifted. Oscar's presence in our lives grew, and he spent more time with us than he had in years. It was heartwarming to see the bond between Archer and his father strengthen. Oscar's warmth and support were a beacon of comfort for both of us, and we cherished the time we spent together as a family. Over time, we learned to heal from the wounds left by Irene's destructive behavior. Archer and I supported each other through the process, growing even closer as a couple. We learned that we could face any challenge together as long as we had love and understanding between us. As the months passed, Irene tried to reach out to Oscar, seeking forgiveness and reconciliation. But Oscar stood strong in his decision, knowing that he deserved a life free from the constant turmoil that Irene brought. Instead of giving in to her pleas, he focused on building a life filled with happiness and positivity. Archer and I supported Oscar every step of the way. We knew that healing would take time, but we were determined to create a brighter future together. And with Oscar's guidance and love, we started to mend the scars left by Irene's toxic influence. In the end, the divorce from Irene marked a new beginning for all of us. We found strength in unity and the importance of setting healthy boundaries. With Oscar's unwavering support, Archer and I grew as individuals and as a couple. We chose to focus on the love we shared and the possibilities of a beautiful life ahead.